This is a great little set of variations by Giuliani on a very famous theme. And one of the things I really love about this particular piece is that it can be played by professionals um, and be pretty effective, but at the same time, it's a great piece that I use to transition intermediate students into the early advanced level. Um, as long as an intermediate student has um, all their technique together, you know, barres and slurs and scales, arpeggios, and a little bit of stretch exercises, then they can probably get a handle on this piece. Um, there'll be difficulties in, in certain sections, but for the most part, it's not um, Giuliani's most ambitious um, set of variations or anything like that. So what I'll do today is just kind of um, talk about my approach to the piece and give you just a few tips on each variation. And uh, but I won't I won't walk through every single bar because that would take too long. So the theme is a very famous theme. It's been used since the Renaissance all the way up to today. Um, historically, you know, over 150 composers have used the theme in, in you know, their variations or in their pieces. So very, very famous um, theme, which is generally a harmonic progression that you really want to know. So in this case, it's in D minor. And if you take the each bar from the theme of this piece, you can just play the chords to get to know the, um, the harmonies. But of course, go out and listen to every version of the theme that you can find out there. Um, just go on Spotify or, or YouTube and, and just find every single one so you can get to know the history of the theme. There's even a Wikipedia article on it. So the first bar would be like D minor, then A, then D minor, then C, Giuliani throws in one or two um, secondary dominants, but don't worry about that right now. But get to know that theme. And for the theme of this piece, choose a, a moderate tempo because um, as you go through the variations, you might want to stick with the tempo for at least the first few variations. So don't go too fast because this is only eighth notes and you have some ones with sixteenth notes coming up. So, but in general, be nice and strong with the basses and make sure the harmony is coming out. So lots of sustain and strong bass line by legato, right? Uh, but not too much to say about the theme of the piece, just um, as you go through the, all the variations, you might want to compare them to the theme, so play the theme and then play the variation, then play the theme again, then play the variation, and go through them that way so you're always comparing everything back to the first theme. When you go to the first variation, um, Giuliani's just put it into eighth notes with an exchange between the upper and lower voice, so you want to bring that out. And I would observe the rests in this particular variation. So that means muting the bass note when there's a rest in that voice. And same thing in the upper voice. You take your finger off the upper voice when you get to the rest to stop it there as well. Rest, rest, or mute. Mute, mute. So if you have a note ringing, you want to mute it on the rests. That'll clean up the variation and give it um, its you know own specific character. It'll really bring it out. Also, the accents that I wrote in my score are originally Sforzando's in the in the original. So feel free to bring that out. I didn't bring them out too much, but they are in the original. Now, um, so for the, as I go through the variations, I generally keep the same tempo, but I, I kind of just like let it naturally speed up a little bit. So if I was playing the, the theme at like 108 on the metronome, then on um, variation one, I probably just drifted into 112. And then on variation two, kind of drifted into 116. I let it, you know, it's not that noticeable of a difference, but I do like to kind of let them build up some speed and excitement. And I think that's worth doing. But it's going to really depend on your, your level. Um, it can be very tricky to keep the same tempo because the requirements will be harder. So if you're more at the intermediate level, you, you'll just have to like make sure you're playing evenly and musically and, and not worry too much about the tempos. Variation two just is, you'll have to practice it to get the slurs, you know, even and just really slowly when you're first doing it and then slowly just get the metronome going up and keep that evenness. Um, 
observe his dynamics. He wants you to bring out the theme. And then just his extra figuration. He wants you to play a little softer. So don't, don't make too much of it. Um, you just really want to bring out those harmonies as much as possible. In bar six of variation two, um, I do a quick change there. I go two, three, four, and then change on the open string. It's in the fingering, but um, it's, a, it's a bit of a fast exchange, so just watch that one. Um, lots of opportunities to uh, push the tempo there, uh, so it all will depend on your level of, of athletic technique. Variation three, I generally, like I said, um, keep the, the tempo going, and so um, I continue to speed up a little bit, but, but still generally in the approximate range. So he has this one in triplets, so he goes like theme and quarter notes and eighth notes. First one is in eighth notes, second one sixteenth notes, now he's in triplets. So very typical kind of classical set of variations. This one just lots of bar A. And I would mute the basses on the rests as well. So that means rest, 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 rest. Uh, and you go on like that. So just observing those rests, I think again it cleans up and gives the, cleans up the texture and gives the variation some of its character. Um, there's a little passage at the end in bar 63 that's a little bit tricky. For fingering in the right hand, like I have the left hand fingering in there, but right hand fingering, I actually do A, M, this is in bar 63 or second to last bar of this variation, but I go A, M, I, P, I, M, and then you're somewhat home free. So you're, you're just cooking along here, and yes, he changes the the arpeggio there, but that's in the original. And then A, M, I, P, I, A, or something like that. You just have to practice it slowly. It's not a typo, that's, the, that's what's written. So um, practice it really slowly and it actually works out fairly well. Just give it lots of time. So on variation four, I ditched the, um, the you know, keeping the metronome speed or the, the tempo the same even though I've been gradually increasing. Uh, it's a really difficult movement. Um, it's in octaves. Um, so it's really just gonna depend on your level. If you were to keep it at the same tempo that you're going and you're doing this at like one, you know, 26 or something, uh, it's gonna be pretty pretty difficult in, to, to do it. I do a mix. Um, I, I slow down a little bit because it's still gonna, it still is going to sound fast, but I use a little bit of rubato just to make it not machine gun fire for, for the whole page or the, for the whole variation. So I will you know, I, I kind of go through a phrase and then back off a little bit. So I, I add a little bit of rubato in there. That's that's just a choice that I made for the movement. Um, partly to bring the speed up, but give me some relief, but also um, to just break up the, the phrasing of the piece, which otherwise would be just like constant, like, cha -cha 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 -cha, you know, lots of, of that kind of erratic energy. So if you choose to do that, you can just add a little bit of that in. Variation five, very welcome change. Um, here he's in the major keys in D major, so we've gone from minor to major now, and and he's also put like a poco adagio, so just a lot slower. Um, just time to chill out and show a gentler side of your musicality. In some ways, though, this is the harder movement than the rest of them because it's such a sensitive. But that said, nothing, nothing too crazy. A couple stretches that you have to accomplish. Um, some funny bars like in bar 94. So I do a bar A, 
sneak the second finger onto the C sharp there. Guide that finger up to the A. And then you're, you're home free there. A little bit of articulation fun with staccatos later on. Um, there's one freaky moment at 103. I couldn't find a different finger. I do a bar raise with my third finger. So weird, but you know, every time I tried to do it in a different way, um, I would lose some of the sustain from the upper voice. So I didn't want to lose any sustain, so I, I did do that, that wacky fingering there. And then you just, um, you have a little moment of pause near the end. Which is so welcome before we get to the finale or the variation number six. So it's kind of a funny variation for me. Um, it's kind of a catch-22 on this one. Uh, the, the ending can be pretty fast. Um, some of these 16th notes. Um, some of the arpeggios, some of the figuration near the end. So that can be a little bit tricky at fast tempos, but the beginning of the variation really does, it wants you to cook quite a bit. But if you go too fast, you're gonna run into some serious troubles later on. So again, it's dependent on your, on your technique level, but I just tried to do as much of a compromise as possible. I would, I picked the fastest possible tempo for the end, and then, yeah. Um, you go back to the beginning and just and you go at that speed. But one thing I will say is that when you lower the tempo, so if, if you don't like the speed going slower at the beginning, you know, if it feels lame <laughs> um, or like low energy, uh, just up your articulation level and be nice and crisp. More specific about those little rests, eighth note rests that he adds in there. So it's almost not staccato, but detached, right? Um, so the more specific you are with the articulation, the more interest there is in the variation, which will distract from maybe the less than ideal speed that you might want for the for the last variation there. Um, watch your right hand fingering in this one. For the most part, it's pretty straightforward. It's like you know. I and A on the beginning with M. So A, A, M, A. But when you get to, you know, uh, bar 119, for example, make sure you switch to P, I, M. A, M. So M, M, A, M. Those little changes are just fast enough that you do want to alternate fingers. But it's pretty straightforward. Um, it doesn't even matter particularly what fingerings you do use, but you must alternate. So I would do it like that. If the strings are spaced, use IA. If the strings are next to each other, generally use um, um, I and M and throw in the A finger for the alternation. Besides that, some dynamics to follow later in the piece and some watch out for those sforzandos. They're kind of effective in this particular piece. And then when you get to 146, Ah, just go totally legato after all this sh short articulation. Go totally legato and smooth and it, it sounds um, like a really nice contrast in the end there. So I hope you enjoy that set of variations. I think it's a great example of the classical set of variations and um, such a great famous theme in that minor key, and also a great piece for a variety of different levels of players. Um, if you're more on the intermediate side, then you know just take slightly slower tempos, take your time. And if you're an advanced player, then you can you can really take this relatively simple music and make it difficult by by increasing the tempo. If you increase the tempo, this there will be some difficult sections and it'll become an advanced work very quickly. So, uh, but nothing insurmountable in terms of, of the technique involved. So, a uh, great little piece. I've used it lots with, with my students.